Being able to quickly access all your scenes and sources while you are streaming is a must. I have over 70 scenes and 200 sources, but when I am streaming, I really only need access to six of them. And when I just want to find that one source that's hidden in one of my over 70 scenes and I can't remember where, I have to go looking through every single one of them to find it. But that changes today, because I found myself a cow. <coughs> cow. Q-A-U. Not... No. This plugin allows you to make docs specifically designed to help you search for your scenes and sources if you can't find them. Group the scenes you really need during your streams and way, way more. The Quick Access Utility plugin is a collaboration of two of the most prolific plugin designers for OBS, Finite Singularity and Exeldro, and it brings the most quality of life that I've been able to find in a single plugin. It is still an alpha, so there might be some bugs and it might look very different for you than it does for me, but the functionality is only going to get better and it's already worth it. To download it, just search for Quick Access Utility for OBS on Google or whatever your preferred website is and open the GitHub page. On the right hand side, click releases and open the assets of the latest release. Choose whichever platform you are using, in my case that's Windows, and download it. Honestly, sometimes I wonder if we still need to go through these little how to install sections. We've done this so often now, I'm not entirely sure if I still need to. But this one was a little weird because it wasn't on the OBS website. So I suppose for this one, it's not a bad choice to go through it. Now that it's downloaded, let's go back to our regular programming. Extract the contents into your OBS folder and boot OBS. If it has all gone well, then you can open the quick access utility from the tools menu. Oh, this is my actual streaming OBS, by the way. So as you can see, lots of scenes and even more sources. Since I've been using this for a while now, that also means that I already have some docs set up. But for you, this is going to be completely empty. To add your first doc, click the new doc button. There are three doc types that you can generate. Manual, dynamic, and search. What each of the properties does, I will show you in a bit. But the doc type you are going to be most familiar with is the manual doc. What the manual doc allows you to do is to create a doc which contains exactly the sources or scenes that you want. So that means we can add things like your main camera, your second camera, your vertical camera, and your PTC camera, and you will always have access to these, so you can adjust them on the fly. But right now when we click on these, it doesn't change your scene or source, meaning your viewers won't see what you are doing behind the scenes. You might wonder how this can be useful, but trust me, it is. Something I use this for is if there are sources that need to be quickly toggled on or off. If you look at the dock here, you can see I have added a few random wheels to do challenges, a little tracking widget and some other stuff. The problem is that these wheels are nested three layers down, so getting to them can be quite a challenge to turn them on and off. But when you click the hamburger menu thing in the dock, you can see all the scenes in which you use this particular source which are called its parent scenes. Then a simple click on the eye, you can turn the visibility on and off on that specific scene, just like when you are actually showing the scene on your stream. Another thing that can be really helpful is this button, which allows you to access all the filters that you have on the sources or scenes you have added, allowing you to turn them on and off manually, trigger them in case of move sources, or change them on the fly if you want. Okay, but at the start, I told you you can make custom docs to just have the scenes you actually use instead of the list of over 70 scenes. Look, when you're streaming, you usually don't need access to all of your scenes unless shit hits the fan, right? So let's keep things nice and clean so you can focus on being an entertaining creator. I've made two of these docs for myself, one for my static scenes for my starting soon, be right back and stream ending scene and one for the scenes that I actually want to show while streaming my gaming scene which shows my game my screen scene which shows everything that happens on the screen and my intermission or just chatting scene by the way if you guys are interested to see how I set up my OBS then leave a comment down below I might do a live stream very very soon in which I try to set up an OBS completely from scratch so a starting streamer can use it very well while using all the hacks, tips and tricks that I've learned over my last three and a half years of streaming. 
Heck, I'll even pick one of you to completely redesign the OBS 4, make streamer bot actions, and I will send the whole pack to you for free. Right now, if you would make the same docs, then they would actually not do what you want to do, because when you click on these, nothing changes. We are still on the same scene we were before. To fix that so that we can use them like a normal OBS doc that allows us to change scenes, we have to enable clickable scenes when we make a new doc or click the last square underneath the little play button for the docs that we've already created. And now when you click on one of these, it will actually switch to that scene. So we don't need our scenes doc anymore when we are streaming and we can just use these. For the dynamic docs, things are a little bit different. When you create a dynamic doc, it will show you all the sources of the currently active scene. But I can already hear you say, that's what we have the sources doc for, right? Yes, you're right, but this goes a step further and shows you every single source that is in your nested scenes as well. Just look at this. All these redemptions are usually nested in a scene called combined redemptions but the dynamic doc just draws them out, meaning I can edit them, turn them off, or just like with the static box, change the filter and position with ease. The same goes for all these widgets that you can see. It is not something that I use a lot, but it can be useful from time to time just as a second tab behind your usual sources doc, so that when you need to change something on the fly, you can. If you remember the name of your scene or source though, you can do something far more powerful. And this is probably the best quality of life feature for someone like me who has all the scenes and sources, searching. Once you've added the search doc, you can type in the name of whatever scene or source you want to control and do exactly the same as in the manual doc. You can use the cog to edit the properties of a source, you can use the filter button to get to all the filters, and you can use the hamburger menu to see the parent scenes, turn them on and off, or change their position straight from the search box. This means that even though you are limiting how many docs you have on screen, you are not even sacrificing anything for it. Honestly, I don't understand why this feature is not just part of OBS. And if you are still struggling with keeping your OBS clean because you still have too many docs, then wouldn't it be nice if you can create doc sets, which you can easily switch between, so you can have your horizontal editing, vertical editing and streaming layouts saved easily in OBS? Well, you can find that and four more OBS plugins, which I use almost every day in the video right here. And as always, stream better, stream smart.